notebook, pen, and paper. Take the time to write down, you know, I'm going to dominate and win the Olympic trials, and then go back into bed and skip the workout. You don't, you don't do that. You don't write down your sales goals. I'm going to sell 100, you know, 150, whatever this month, and then just go to bed. So I'm telling you, that is the number one step thing that to start doing is write down your goals. Put pen to paper. It's unbelievable. You, everybody familiar with um, Ace Ventura, the original one? Let's see, like, think I must die, think I must die. <laughs> I can be committed to an insane asylum if you go back and look through my notebooks on all the goals and all the people, all the things I'm going to dominate with. But what's unbelievable about that is just by writing that down, I had like 60 to 80 to 90 percent of those goals, depending on the time that I'm doing it, actually come true. And I'm like, oh my God, this is magic. Imagine that, right? Write down what it is you want every single day, and you have a 70 or 80% chance of it happening. Like, when I discovered that, I was like, is this the pen that's, that's magic? Is that what it is? Like, what is, but it was, it was the habit, it was the act of doing that. Um, so the other awesome thing that I love about goals is, my Olympic coach told me this, and my sales coach told me this, and I had my, several coaches. Um, they all said the same thing, it's we don't rise to the lowest level of our goal, right? We fall to the highest level of our standards. So we all have standards here. I have standards for, you know, what I physically feel like I need to look like. I have standards for the amount of money that I would take for, you know, an event. I have standards for the amount of time that I will go and hang out with somebody in a sales, you know, a real estate sale before they're signing the contract. Like we all have these certain standards. Um, so again, Goals are fantastic to have, but you guys are going to rise to level your standards. Uh, something I love doing is if you sit in a room, you say, hey, everybody's going to have a goal that, hey, I want to look better, I want to feel better, I want to exercise more. It's a goal. If my standard is I work out four times a week no matter what, that's my standard, and you ask people what that goal, like who has that standard, the people who have standards that they go to the gym four, five, six times a week look like they go to the gym four, five, six times a week. The people who have the standard that I'm selling, you know, 100 units um, you know, every single month or writing this many policies or whatever it is, their bank account, their sales track record reflects that to that standard. So it's something I really, really want you guys to think about is not just the goals but the standards. Um, and setting good standards while also leaving, it's, it could be a keystone habit, right, to building good goals. Uh, when I tell people when they want to start feeling better, getting healthier, um, they're like, all right, well, oh, awesome. I want to, um, I'm going to go to the gym. Well, great. You guys have two, maybe three opportunities per day to go to the gym. We have right when we get up, we can do it before work. We can maybe do it sometime in the afternoon if we can sneak away, or we can do it after work. There's only three opportunities. It's a hard one to hit. If I want to eat better, great. Why well, I only eat three, six times a day. Like the number one habit that I have people during the standards is drink more water. Because how many times a day do you pick something up and you drink it? Hundreds. You have hundreds of opportunity to change and better your life. And that's a keystone habit. You start drinking more water, you start feeling better, you start feeling better, right? It's that cycle of success that starts going upwards. So I want you guys to really think about that. Uh, and then the levels of goals. You have your sales goal for this year. Um, you have the one that you know you can do it, right? I can just show up and kind of coast through life and I'm going to get it done. Um, that's level one. The level two goals are, whoa, that's a little stretch. I think I can do it just a little bit outside my comfort zone. I think I'm going to be able to do that. Um, and then the third level is the stretch goal. Right? What's the big goal that should scare you? And going back, right, your goal should scare you a little bit. It should excite you. Right? $15 million in net worth, 50000 passive income. That's my goal before I'm 40. And if you see me driving a Tesla, I have hit my goal. Right? That's, that's going to be my goal. That's, and that's my goal. And I say that to you guys because, again, I, I've made it verbal. i put it out there. I want people to know what it is I'm aiming for, what it is I'm doing, so I can be purposeful in the moment. So I like that. I like having that accountability. I like people knowing what it is I'm aiming for and what it is I'm striving for. So that kind of breaks everything down backwards. So the last thing about your goals, and I know you've all heard this before, right, the SMART goals. Um, especially as a salesperson, right, your goal has to be SMART. Right? If you say, I, I can't tell you all the time, your real estate agents come in and they go, hey, I wanna, my goal here is to make more money. And I'm like, great, here's a dollar. Goal complete. <laughs> what do you mean? Here's a dollar, just made more money, goal complete. A goal's gotta be specific. Right? I wanna sell X number of what this year. 
I want to recruit X number of people. I want to help this many people sell this many policy. You got to know it and then you got to verbalize it. You got to verbalize it. You got to be able to put it out there. You got to clearly communicate it, right? The way I look at your SMART goal is you should be able to tell it to a five-year-old, right? You tell it to a five-year-old or a 10-year-old, so some sort of kid. I don't, they don't blend in now at that age. But <laughs> seven-year-old at some point, right, should be able to go out and tell you exactly what it is if you're on track in your goals. If I say, I want to sell more, I don't know what that means. What's more to you, right? So I want a specific. Number two, it's got to be measurable. I want to be healthier. Well, what does that mean, healthier? Do you want to lose weight, right? Do you want to feel better? Do you want to this? You got to have a way to sit and track it and do it. So you got to be able to measure that. Um, got to be achievable, right? Um, if your sales goal this year is to, you know, to net a million dollars in sales, and the most you ever met netted was 80 grand, 90 grand, that's a really big jump. I'm never going to put limitations on you and say that you can or cannot do anything. Um, but I would start to see, like, is this achievable, right? Like, hey, if I want to play in the NBA, is that really achievable at my height, at my at 34 years old, at my level? And I, I mean, literally, <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I shoot basketball, right? I never, I wrestle, you know, that's what I do. Um, so it's got to be achievable, or it's got to be realistic. As much as I'd love to just stand up and fly right now, it's tough. Um, it's got to be realistic, right? And then the, the T is you got to have a time sensitive on it, right? So think of my, my goal, 50000 in passive income, $15 million in net worth, right? 50000 passive income every month, $15 million in net worth before I'm 40. Specific, I can measure it. And I'm weird, I do my cash flow every single month and I do my net worth every quarter so I know where I'm at. It's achievable if people out there have done that, like Jeff Bezos probably makes that sleep last night. Right? So I know it's achievable, I know it's realistic, I know it can be done, and I put a time sensor on it. So the big things here is you can see on the pen, smart ER. This is where I, I get people that don't do it. The ER, the ER, this is super, super important. Um, is it uh, you gotta then evaluate and then readjust? That's the big thing about your smart goal. So I'm pretty sure right now, I want you guys to take a minute or two. Write down your goal, right? This is what I did at 7 a.m. this morning. Write down your SMART goal. A lot of you probably already have it in mind. You probably already kind of know, but I'm telling you, take out that there's pen and paper and make sure everybody has it on there. Take it down and just write, write it out. I will write your SMART goal. And then share it with somebody at your table once you have it. So I can't make you guys do this every single day um, unless you join my coaching program at Keller Williams Real Estate Agent, which I can't even make them do it. I can just sit there and make them feel really, really awkward when they don't do it and start to pull on their strings of the next thing we're gonna go into, which is your big why. Right? Everybody here has goals. Everybody here has you know, something they wanna do, they wanna achieve. This video right here um, that I'm gonna play for you guys, no joke, I've probably watched it 800 times this year. Uh, it's one of the most motivating video of it, and it goes in our part two. You identify what it is you want, specifically in sales, right? I want to do this in business, whatever it is, I, I, this is what I want. Here's the second part behind it. Why do you want it? Um, this right here, I cannot stress you. If this is the only two things you guys get out of this, I'll be happy you're halfway there. Figuring out exactly what it is you want. But now why you want it, this is so much more important. So here we go.
Yeah, that's, I mean. I get tingles, sometimes I get tears over time. I don't, I don't I mean, that, that moves me. I know, it's the one person yawning. <laughs> we had late nights, and then they gave you a bunch of food. I understand, I know what it is. I got all the, all the dominoes lined up right now. Um, how big of a why is that? That's a powerful why. Right? For those of you who are readers, if you have trouble discovering what your big why is, um, Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, one of the best books um, I've read on, on helping discover what my big why is. And your why will change. For me, for me, it's easy. It's my family. So when I think about this, I'm, can I get a little intense with you guys right now? Do I have permission? Is that okay? You got to be willing to die for your big why. If, you're, if your why is financial, if your why is just this, right? Like, it's not a not amount of money in the world that I'm willing to die for. Your big why has got to be something that drives you. And it doesn't matter. My big why is my big why. Yours could be that, that teacher that told you you're never going to mount anything. It could be that chip on your shoulder that you had, right? It could be the fact that, hey, I'm leaving something better for my kids so that when they pass away, they're never going to have that opportunity. They're never going to miss out on opportunities, right? My big why is my family. Uh, being an eight-time national champion uh, in wrestling, uh, I am very, very hard to kill, especially in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Right? And I, I love my family. I will stand on the hill and die for my family. That is my big why. That drives me. right? Because what I want to do is I know when I'm 40 and I hit that $15 million in net worth and I have that $50,000 in passive income, guess what? I get to become soccer coach dad. Right, that's, that's what I want to do. I want to spend all my time I have with my family. Not all of it because they will hate me if I'm too much, around them too much. To be like, right? But I want to be able to control my time. Right? We're not here. Right? We're not here for a long time. So I want to be able to make sure that I'm never missing my son's soccer game, uh, my daughter's dance recitals, uh, anything that I need to do for my wife. I want to be able to take my kids down to Chile and have them learn, you know, um, Portuguese or Spanish or different languages by going and traveling and doing and being with them. I just want to spend all my time with my family because I'm not going to have enough time here on this earth to do all the things I want to do. I'm already 34, so right, as, as we call it, that's the first, you know, the first third is way done. 30, 60, anything past 90 is great. I mean, you guys know better than me, you're in healthcare, right? Like, <laughs> life expectancy. So that's what I want. That's my big why. So your big why, what it is, and that's the second part I want you to, to, to write down. If you don't know, it's okay, but you should be able to write down in one or two words, my big why is this. What's driving you to hit that smart goal? What is it? All right, and I walk in my office, I could have the worst day ever, and, and, and hear 100 no's when I look up and I see that picture of my wife and my, you know, my kids, I know that's my big why. I say, that's gonna get me to the next no, that's gonna get me to the next sale, that's gonna get me to doing the next thing. It's endless amounts of motivation. That's gotta be strong. That is your why. Um, what's awesome is the why is the carrot, right? And it's great. We all have carrots that we want to go over to. Um, you gotta have a you gotta have a little bit of stick. You gotta have something that stinks, right? And and, and I love this. Um, I love this because your why will drive us, right? But if, if our why was enough, right? If just money was motivating enough, and it was one of my favorite other quotes, right? It's like if knowledge was everything, right? We'd all be billionaires with six packs. There's all the knowledge in the world you need out there on YouTube, but the big key is what I hope to get you guys out of this is to take action, to actually do it. Because right? anybody can go and earn, you know, any, anybody can do it. Um, so you have that carrot, but you need a little bit of a sting if you don't do it, right? So my sting is what happens to me, what if I don't do it? What am I missing out on? Um, so a couple of things I have, my coach right now, I have two $500 checks that I wrote out there. And uh, I have a newsletter that I send to my team every single Sunday. And if I ever miss a Sunday that I do not send it, that $500 check gets cashed and it goes to one of the Kardashians. <laughs> do, do they need my $500? Absolutely not. That stinks, that upsets me. There's no way one of the Kardashians are getting my $500, right? No way. So guess what's happening on Sundays? My newsletter may go out. Absolutely, right? Another one is I'm taking a course, so I have to finish this amount of course and the same thing. I have another $500 check that gets written. Right, that fear of loss, 
is a huge motivating factor. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you an example of it right now. This is, this is human nature. Um, who, here, who here would come up on stage and compete for like $100? Like, raise your hand. I had a competition for $100, right? No, raise your hand, get up there, right? Who would go and compete for $100 right now, up here on stage? Yeah, we got a couple. All right. Same thing, here's what's awesome. If you don't come up here on stage and compete, you lose $100. Now I'll raise your hand if you come up. <laughs> Thank you, right? Yeah, fear of loss. So you gotta have that sting. You gotta have something in place that can do it. And again, this will be in the step four. It can't be you, right? I can't hold myself accountable. If I didn't physically write that check out, because I'd be like, oh, you know what? It's Sunday, I was up there, I was doing this. I'm not gonna pause it. Somebody else, it's, it's, it's already there. It's like, hey, listen, there's, you said it, you put it on there, there's no other options. Either I do it or I don't. Um, so I love that. So um, part three, you guys know what you want. You know why you want it. Part three, um, what am I gonna do? What's my plan? Now this is something you're not gonna be able to go and work through right now, right? Planning takes time. Um, one of my favorite stories is my college roommate. Um, very interesting person. Um, I saw him like the one time my freshman year, and he's like, all right, I got a lot to do, I got a lot to do, here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a to-do list. And he wrote this to-do list, and then he gets like a phone call from like a, a girl. And he's like, all right, I'll be there in like two minutes. And I was like, well, I thought you were writing down the to-do list. And he goes, oh yeah, yeah hold on. Writes something down and goes. And I was like, well, man, walk over to his desk. I'm like, what did you write down? It's like, to-do list. It's like, step one, write to-do list. <laughs> I was like, that was, one, it's hysterical. Um, but again, you gotta watch this double edge. Too many people plan to plan, right? You're planning, you gotta have a time period that you do it. For me, it's every Sunday night. I sit there and I plan my week. Uh, in October, I sit there and I plan my vacations, all my time that I'm not working, all that important thing for 2020. So come October, I will have my 2020 travel schedule set up of the important things, of when I'm taking off, when I'm on vacation, so that what's left in between is my work time, and that's when I have to accomplish my goals. Um, what I love about planning these quotes right here, right, especially we just saw Mike Tyson lose, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower, plans are nothing but planning is everything. It's true. Right? Taking the time to plan is so helpful. I, I, I was working with one guy who literally was in his office crying about the amount of stress and the amount of everything that he had. Um, and we started every week, just take 20 minutes. 20 minutes and sit down, hey, what are these big rocks? What are these big items? What are these big things that I have to really do um, to get to where I want to be? So it's not just the big items. Um, I kind of look at those as dominoes. Right, so there's an awesome book out there uh, by Gary Keller uh, titled The One Thing. And the way that I was described, the best way to describe that book, it's an autobiography on how a billionaire thinks. Um, love that book, and, and you go on to talk about dominoes. So when I'm planning, again, oh, how many people here have done about probably 100 things so far today? I'm saying if you sent a text message, you talked to a person, you wrote something down, like who here has done 100 plus things today already? Absolutely, right? How many of those things did you do move that needle closer to that one goal that you wrote down? That's a sobering question. I saw the energy in the room get a little funky, shift a little bit, um, which I'm okay with, right? Because part of coaching is having being able to have hard conversations. Um, so again, it really is coming down to that numbers game. When you start to line up your dominoes, if I, I want to hit this amount of sales this year, this is my plan, well, it's not just the plans, I gotta build the habits around that plan. Right? Habits are so much better than goals. My goal is to read you know, two books a month. But my habit is I read every night before I go to bed. My goal is to write a book. That can get interrupted, it can find me. There's so many things that can happen, but my habit is I write 200 words every single day. Right? So your habits are gonna be systems that help you put that goals in place. And with you guys in sales, I know what it comes down to, it's the LG one, right? I don't know, anybody, everybody when I say in my office, all the realtors are like, oh, it's like lead generation. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm in real estate because I like, uh, I saw better, you know, the HGTV, and I like fixing homes, I do this, I'm like, you gotta, 
You want to get people on a contract, right? You want to sell policies. You got to go talk to people, right? You got to have some or a funnel or some sort of way. You got to sell policies. You got to get that in. So the way that I look at it is um, dominoes. And I, I can sit here and explain this video that I found of this guy. He looks like a guy that he plays with dominoes. And the only thing I don't like about the last domino that he has, he says is 100 pounds. He picks it up way too easily. Um, <laughs> Chris, that's not me. Um, but this is unbelievable when you talk about the power of dominoes. So I'm gonna play the video and then um, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Everybody knows about playing with dominoes, but what you may not know is that a domino can knock over another domino, which is about one and a half times larger. So what I have here is a chain of dominoes. Each one is one and a half times larger than the previous one. And the smallest domino is about five millimeters high and one millimeter thick. And I will carefully place it. And there are 13 dominoes. And the largest domino, it weighs about 100 pounds and is more than a meter tall. Ready? <laughs> that was 13 dominoes. If I had 29 dominoes, the last domino would be as tall as the Empire State Building. By domino 40, it would sit from Earth and hit the moon. But that tiny little domino. So when you're planning, the way I like to say it is I call it my big rocks, right? What are the important things? And, and again, when I look at it, everybody here is, you're not just you know, an employee or somehow, you know, it's not just work, right? I'm not just a real estate agent, I'm not just a keynote speaker. I have many hats that I wear. So I identify glass balls, and I look at it as we're juggling, right? That guy last night juggling on top of four chairs, right? That's unbelievable, like he's probably really good at this. But we have glass balls, my health, my relationship with my family, my income that I need to earn. Um, certain glass balls that, hey, if I drop those glass balls, right, like my anniversary is coming up, and if I don't get an anniversary gift for my wife, that is dropping yeah, She's already like, <laughs> that's a glass ball I drop. Now, what happens when I go to pick up that glass ball? It shatters, it's scuffed, it's, it's not the same. So those glass balls, I'm always gonna be juggling. And then you have these other things out there that are rubber balls, right? So those rubber balls are the ones that, hey, what happens if I drop a rubber ball? Yeah, bounces and picks back up. So you wanna identify when you're planning, what are my glass balls that, hey, mm -mm, no way, this is non-negotiable, non I am sticking to this, right? And that's gotta be, for me, that's my lead generation time with my work. Right? That's my relationship with my kids, it's my time with my family. Right? That's my income and my big projects that I'm working on. And when I do identify those glass balls, I start to work that plan backwards. Any strength and conditioning coach that would just jump in and start telling me, oh, you just gotta work. No, no, no. I need to peak and be ready to win an Olympic gold medal right, in August of 2012, of 2016, or what that date is, and you work backwards. Great, I got nine months, I got eight months. So we work backwards and we start to identify that lead domino. And every day, if I just go and I knock down and I tack that lead domino, gonna start that chain reaction. So you gotta think about your plan, right, to hit your leads, what is that same thing? What is my plans around that? Um, and again, we get more into it as habits. What's insane is if you guys showed me your calendar right now, you showed me your calendar for the next year, I'll tell you how successful you're gonna be. How much you're gonna improve, how much you're gonna grow, what you're gonna do, especially by those activities on it, right? Um, what I love about habits is, again, they're habitual. I don't need to think about it. I get up in the morning and the first thing I do is I, I literally go into my gratitude and my prayer. So every day I start off my day in a grateful state. And I love gratitude. You can't be grateful and hateful. You can't do it, but it took me time. I didn't always wake up like that. Right? Think about this. Think about your first five minutes of your morning every morning. It's habitual. You wake up, some, some people might reach for the phone right? and scroll on social media. It's not being being reactive, you're reacting to everything on there, right? I'll have you get up, right? What's your, what's your morning routine? What are your habits? And they stack, which is awesome about that too. 
So again, right, it's habitual for me. I, I flush a toilet. I think, oh, that's disgusting. Who many other people have touched that toilet? I wash my hands. It's habit stacking, right? I pick up my toothbrush, right? I brush my teeth, I floss, right? It's, it's habit stacking. So I love that. Um, so again, there's a book out there, um, The Power of Habit um, by Charles Dewey. And I'm a big reader, as you can tell. Um, and, and success leaves clues. There's no better way to get inside the mind of somebody who's already done what you wanted to do than reading and doing it. So the big thing here about the problem with goals, and so there's a fantastic article. Um, sums it up way better than I'll ever do it. If you send me an email, I will send you the article. Ben will send you the article, <laughs> right, um, of it. And it's coachherbert at kw.com, right? Pretty easy on that. But it's an awesome article that really breaks this down on habits versus goals. And this is one of the most interesting things that I kind of looked into on goal setting and habitual form, right? Your, your goal is what you did at first. You identified what it is. Your habit is part of your plan of what that routine is going to be. Right, on what that's gonna be to do it. So my goal is to run a marathon, right? And, and again, but my habit is I'm running daily. So again, I love it because number one, winners and losers have the same goals. The winners have the habits that back it up. When I stepped out there on the mat to compete against one of the best people in the world, well, I either did the work or I didn't. It's gonna show up, right? Um, achieving a goal is only short term. How many people here, right, I've seen all the time, they sign up, they say, I'm gonna run a marathon, and they train for it, they do it, they run the marathon, and then afterwards they're like, I'm, not, I'm never gonna run again. It's a big difference between having that goal and building that habit that I am a runner. I am a salesperson, I am a leader, I am a coach. Um, goals can also, they can restrict your happiness. It wasn't easy in 2016, retiring from wrestling, being an Olympic wrestler, and I'm like, Right now what? Right, I went through a little bit of a doll, which inspired me to do my gratitude rock to really recognize what's grateful to me to bring that all back in. Um, and the other thing too is goals are at, like this right here, goals are at odds with long-term progress. Huh. 27 years old, ready to make an Olympic team, don't even know my wife exists, no kids or anything like that. You tell me that, hey, here's a pill. You take this pill, you're gonna win a gold medal, but I want the last 20 years of your life. I would say in a heartbeat, absolutely. I'd give up those 20 years in a heartbeat for that gold medal then and now, then at that point in time. Now, I would have really been kicking myself in the butt, but I would have foregone and hurt myself to get to that goal rather than building that habit um, behind it. So again, consistency is key. Anything that you do in life, it is consistency. I get horrible at basketball. But if I went in consistently and I picked up a basketball and I took 100 free throw shots every single day, fast forward two years from now, am I going to be pretty good at shooting free throws? <clears throat> Absolutely. I'm going to be better. I don't know how good I'll be, but I'll be way better than if I didn't. But again, success is just consistency over time. So it's the same thing with this system, right? It is the same thing with this system. Um, I wanted. Right here, to sum it up, it's goals, what do you want? Motivation, why do I want it? Part three, what will you do? What's your plan, right? What are your habits you're forming? Um, and then part four, this is the last step. And again, I, can, I already know it. Um, not a lot of people are gonna ever go and compete this again, but if I, if I systematically and I consistently do this, which I do on Sunday nights. I sit down and I review this over and over. And if, if you can't do that yourself, have a coach. Get an accountability partner. Somebody in your life will sit down and help you do this. And you can do the same thing right back with them. These four easy questions. Right? And having an answer with them. Or at least getting clarity on them. Success is progress. Right? It's not the end point. It's to say, hey, am I better today than I was yesterday? Am I made progress towards my goal today? That's, that's the really, really big thing with it. So this fourth and most important set, step is the one that everybody struggles with. Accountability, time blocking, right? So here's something that's crazy about this is most of us have plans probably tomorrow morning, right? We already have plans, we have something we're gonna do. Um, 
But if I told you that, hey, uh, somebody like Dan Gilbert had a, some sort of insurance policy need, right? Like he had something that he needed to get done. Could you change your plans to get there for Dan Gilbert if you're gonna make, let's say you net about half a million dollars on that deal? Absolutely, right? 100%, right? My kids could be sick, right? My wife could be pregnant, right? Which she is, it's, it's ironic because that's what happened, they're sick and pregnant right now. I still was able to get up there because I had a commitment, right? Um, again, for something that big, yeah, we can move mountains and move earth to do that. So if you can do that for the really, really big things, why can't you do it for yourself with something little? Right? And that brings me full circle to getting up is something little habit like getting up in the morning, writing down what you're grateful for, writing down your affirmation, writing down your goals. And that's something that I love that I see a lot of you guys going internal on, which is awesome. It's telling me you're thinking about it. You're processing it, right? But I don't want you just to, you know, to sit on that log. I know I can squat my pants, I like it. Um, I don't want you to be the frog just sitting on the log. I want you guys to take that action, right? To use this system. It's, it's not, it's simple. And it sounds too easy and too good to be true, but here's what I can guarantee. I've seen it. I have people that do it. The people who show up and have committed to doing this for six weeks make more progress in their life in those six weeks than they've done the whole previous year before that. I've seen it. We have an eight-week training program that we do in our office. We have one agent. Um, his goal is to sell 50, or sorry, 50 homes in this eight-week period. He's already up to 36. The previous eight months before that, he sold 12 houses. He's just doing the system. And he wrote out a $5,000 check that will go to like buying a bunch of participation trophies for kids. Because he's super against that. He's just like so hard nosed. I mean, if you guys know this profile, he's so hard D. He's just like, shut up and work harder. Shut up and work harder. That's him. No feelings, anything about it, all D. And I'm like, all right, that's gonna sting for him. Oh, to invest a $5,000 check for participation trophies goes against everything he stands for. <laughs> but he wrote that check out and there's no choice. He's got three weeks that he's gonna do that. And, and, and you know what, it's a win-win. He's already made, I think like $40,000, right? $50,000, something like that off of those sales. Like, I don't know exactly what it is, but he's already made that five times over, but he still has that fear of loss. More important than our fear of gain. So I want you to be, be the frog, right? And, and again, this isn't my system. This is something that I've just put together and I've heard myself. Like I've, I've taken this from somebody else. I mean, there's versions of this everywhere around. Um, a couple big points about this. I do live and die by my calendar, 100%. It is, it is in my calendar on the 24th and it's our anniversary and I get it notice two weeks before that say buy a gift and I get a notice a week before that say did you buy your gift and I get a notice four days before that says you're in trouble if you don't have your gift yet. Right? Like <laughs> your money hours are your lead generation time. I've had people um, <laughs> it's the same thing is I'll, I'll hand people a hundred dollar bill and I'm saying listen I'm going to go and make $20 in my office you get to keep this if when I walk out of here I don't have it done. I didn't do it. Um, I had um, Probably a little appropriate, but I'm gonna go for it anyways. I had a manager that used to come into his office, take off his pants, hand them to the secretary, and say, when I'm done with my lead generation, bring my pants back so I can walk around the office. <laughs> right, like, whatever it is to do, like, it will work. But you gotta have that sting, you gotta have that carrot. Um, right, so to sum up, out of time, I'm at zero right now, which is great. Um, it's easy. Identify what it is you want. Take the time. It's going to change. Right? What you want will change. What I wanted as a 23-year-old, very different than what I want as a 34-year-old, which would be very different than what I want as a 60-year-old. But as long as I'm identifying it and I know what it is, I know I'm making progress or not. Your big why, it's got to excite you. You've got to be willing to fight and die for it. Right? Just like the people that go off, you know, that join the military, and they go off and they fight for like because they believe so much in our country. They're willing to go out there and die for it. 
um, they have a big why. So your big why has got to be like that. Take time, make your plan. Get with a coach. I got eight coaches, right? It's awesome. Like you watch any Olympian coming in, there's like one in the country, I think, I can't remember the name of the country, they had one athlete, seven coaches for that guy. Seven coaches around that. Um, find somebody, a coach, a partner. You, you have people here that'll have an accountability partner that's gonna drive you, that's gonna help you out. Um, and then you gotta be able to have somebody, one, that person has to hold you accountable. You gotta time block it into your schedule. You cannot, cannot miss it. And you gotta think like, hey, if I miss that appointment, it's gotta be life or death. And that's, that's getting a little intense with it too. So awesome readings. Um, I, I am a huge advocate of reader. And if you guys wanna cheat a little bit, which hey, I'm all about, um, there is a YouTube summaries of all these books. Great way to start. <laughs> Great way to start, right? I get the YouTube summary, I watch that, and then I buy the book, I read that deeper, and then I'll typically find a little bit of that author and watch different talks or audio or, or podcasts or different things he's on, absorb it all, and now that's like another layer I've added to myself for my business, for my family, for everything else, and whatever area you want to improve. Um, <laughs> number seven right there, How I Raise Myself from Failure to Success in Selling by Frank Becker. Be a psychopath like me. I listen to it every day for 30 days. Just chapter one. Every day for 30 days. Unbelievable how enthusiasm tripled his income. Just enthusiasm. It's unbelievable. I already told that to Ben today. Um, these books, these author, these people, right? They took the time to write this down to get to a wide audience, right? To be able to spread it out. So I take time doing that. So um, I really want to thank you guys um, for giving me your time, um, for giving your, me your attention here. I'm not a hard person to get a hold of. If you guys need help with any of this stuff, if you shoot me an email, coachherbert at kw.com, I will get back to you. I read all my emails. And here's the fun thing too is um, a coach over here had a kid, uh, did a wrestling clinic, so one of his kids came in and was actually emailing me. If you email me, I will continuously hit the ball back in your court. And I've yet to meet somebody, with the exception of my wife, that continues to hit the ball back every single time consistently. All right, so I'm willing to sit here, I'm willing to help, um, but again, you guys have all these other resources. All right, you're gonna be successful. What you guys do is awesome. Um, and again, I hope this was changing. I hope this has inspired you to take action. Um, and again, I thank you guys for helping me with my life mission of leaving people, place, and things uh, better than I found them. So, um, I don't know how to end it, so I'm just gonna. <laughs> <laughs>